Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this really cool 3D mobile interaction with light. So it's going to be super easy and fun to do, so let's get into it. So here we are with Spline startup screen, so let's click here to open a new file. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is to get rid of this uh, rectangle here, so we don't need to use it. And then click on this menu up here, this plus button, and then create a sphere down here. And then uh, you can make it bigger and then move it up a little bit. And then let's create the ear for the emoji. So let's click on this vector button. And with this tool, you can draw any kind of vector shape. So I'm going to draw this very simple ear shape like this. And then we have this flat 3D object. Uh, and then we can go to this extrusion and then increase the thickness of it. Uh, and then you can also uh, increase the bevel so it's a little bit softer, um, something like this. Alright, so we have this ear here, let's scale it down a little bit and move it up to this, um, on the top of the sphere. And then let's uh, duplicate this into the second ear and move it to the left uh, and rotate it a little bit. So we have the two ears uh, in place of the um, emoji here. Alright. Now let's select the sphere and then from this material channels, I'm going to switch this color channel to image and then we can click here to map some image to this sphere. So in my Figma file, I already prepared the three um, phase map uh, for the free state of the emojis. So these are actually very simple, it's just a few layers with some drop shadow effects. So I will put this Figma link under the description uh, for you guys to uh, take a look and maybe you can try to uh, replicate this. Uh, Alright, so we have this free um, stake here and I export it to uh, the JPEG file. And all I have to do now is to, to kind of load it to this sphere here. And now you can see that it uh, shows up on the sphere uh, surface. Uh, but it's a little bit like facing the wrong direction, so all I have to do is just rotate it back to this uh, front view. So kind of like this. So we have this face um, of the emoji here, uh, and it's look quite good already. So I think this is a very handful technique for those who don't want to spend too much time on modeling, but still wanted to have a very cool characters in 3Ds. So uh, next, I'm going to uh, uh, play around with the material a little bit to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to reduce the intensity of the lighting to 80s and then add another Fresno channels um, and then maybe change the color to something a little bit more blue like this. Alright, it's looking pretty good. So let's reduce the Fresno channel to 70%. So uh, next step, I'm going to create two more image channel uh, to load the other two state of the emoji. So let's create one image channel and then move it down to this position. And you can click here to load the uh, JPEG image. So I'm going to load this happy JPEG. And then now we can create the third one. So exactly the same uh, process, just uh, switch to image and then move it down here and then load the the, the third state which is the angry state to this uh, sphere so now we have this free JPEG image uh, that's being mapped to this sphere so for now let's uh, turn off these two layers so we can just focus on the first state and then we can come back this uh, to this later and work on it alright so next I wanted to give this ear a little bit of the color so let's create a depth channels and then just give it some color so i wanted to go with some a little bit like orange like this and same here uh, maybe it's a little bit darker and then i wanted to revert the colors here um, so we have something like this and then you can control these handles um, to adjust how the gradient look uh, so something like this will be cool and then um, we're good here so uh, maybe let's reduce the lighting a little bit so we can have a a little bit flatter look like this all right cool um so we have this uh have a really nice color here so let's click here to give it a material so i'm going to name this materials maybe ears and then all i have to do is to select this ear and then apply the material that we just create to it 
All right, so we have this emoji looking pretty good here. So next step, let's click anyone on the screen. And then from here, you can change the background color. So I wanted to um, have this a little bit like more like a dark blue color like this. And let me just adjust the light a little bit. All right, so now I wanted to create a shadow for the emoji. So let's click here to create a eclipse shape and then scale it up a little bit. And then on this color channels, uh, let's click on gradient. And then switch it to radio and for these two colors uh, so for this one i'm going to select the very dark blue shadows uh, colors and then for this one i'm going to uh, also select the same but i'm going to reduce this uh, opacity to zero so we can have like a, this this 2d shadow like this and then we can rotate it to maybe 80 um, degrees uh, for the x axis uh, so we can have shadows uh, a fake shadow like this so the reason why we have to do this because we don't have the platform um, for the light to to kind of cast the shadows on on the surface so we have to create this kind of fake shadows okay so next thing we need to do is to create some buttons so super easy let's create a rectangle here and then resize it uh, a little bit smaller and longer like this and then from this uh, corners we can increase the roundness of the corners and then we can also like change the color to uh, pretty much the same as the background but a little bit lighter so we, we can have this kind of button style like this uh, and then let's rename this rectangle to button uh, elf um, so we can use it later for this interactions and then I'm going to drag uh, these icons uh, add VG icon to splice so all you have to do is just click here and then drag it to splice and then just drop it here so now you have this vector icons uh, here so let's just move it a little bit to the front so it doesn't overlap with this um, rectangle shape and scale it down a little bit move it to the centers and then rename this to icons uh, so now let's select the icon and also the button L and then group it into one group and then rename this as thumb up. And then we can duplicate this whole group and make the second buttons. And for this one, I'm going to name it thumb down. And also uh, let's go to this and then rename this button L to button R, which means right. And then let's uh, rotate this thumb down icon. Uh, so we can have it actually, you know, pointing down and then move it back to the centers um, like this. Alright, so we have these two buttons here. So last thing is to uh, add this text title. Uh, so just click here and then click anywhere and then you can start typing. So it could be something like read your experience. Uh, Alright, so we have the text here. So uh, let's uh, center it. And then increase this um, font size to 20s and then give it a more prominent colors and maybe increase the light height a little bit and also you can also change to another font uh, so let's go with this one all right so let's look a little bit better now uh, so we kind of have everything set up here uh, so now let's start working on the interaction so i'm going to select the face so as you remember we have these two channel is being uh, turned off here so let's turn it on and then um, go to this state and create another state so we have the two state the base state and the state um, so for the base state i'm going to reduce the two image channel to zero opacity so the base day will be this neutral face and for the second day I'm going to increase the second image to 100% so we have this happy face here um, and then for this day I also wanted to change the colors of the Fresno to something that match the, the colors of the face so let's select something green like this um, uh, maybe a little bit darker all right so let's check back to the second so we have two stay here uh, this one so it's looking good so let's create a third stay and for this one I'm going to bump this uh, angry face uh, opacity to 100% and then um, also change this Fresno color to something orange like this um, all right so we have the free stay set up here it's looking pretty good now 
So now let's uh, select the face and the two ears and then group it into one single group and rename it as rotation. And then we're going to add some state to this group. So let's click here and for the base state, uh, let's just keep it at zero for the Y axis. And for the second state, uh, let's change it to 360. And for the third state, uh, it's going to be minus 360. Uh, so we have the free state here uh, for the rotation. And finally, let's add it to state for this button. Uh, so let's select the button L and click here to add the state. So for the base state, let's keep it as originals. And for the second state, I'm going to change the color to a kind of pink color like this. And then let's click here to copy these colors and apply it to the other buttons let's so let's select button r and then uh, for the second stage let's just paste the colors uh, for this button so we have the two stage for these two buttons here all right so we kind of have everything set up here with its own stage um, and then finally what we need to do is to create some event for this button to trigger this whole interaction so with this thumb up group selected i'm going to add a event to this and let's select this mouse mouse down event which means when you click it's gonna happen something uh, and let's go to the setting here so i'm going to with this event i'm going to trigger this button l which is this one uh, so let's select it and then instead of base day i'm going to switch it to state and then just change the duration to 0.2 uh, and then let's click here to preview it so when you click on this it will go to the second state which is the uh, pink um, state okay so let's do exactly the same for this the other buttons so let's select the thumb down and then add an event uh, mouse down and for this one let's select the button r instead and then switch it to state and also duration 0.2 so let's preview it so it's working pretty good now but the thing is that i don't want these to be active in the same time uh, so let's go back here and with this group selected i'm going to add a new object to this event so when you when this event happens it's going to trigger multiple objects so let's click here and then for this one i'm going to select this button l which is the other button so let's select it and I want the other button to go back to the ori original state as we hit this current button. So let's also change the duration to 0.2. So when you click here, and then click here, it will go back to the original state. So now again, let's just apply exactly the same process to the other button. So for this one, let's select um, this button R, button R, which is uh, the right one. Um, and then, yes, base date, and then yes duration 0.2 okay so now we have the two buttons working as a toggle so uh, it's working pretty good now so it's good so the last thing we need to do is to you know when you click the buttons this whole group will rotate and also change this emoji state all we need to do is to add another object to this mouse down event so for object let's select the rotation and down here let's select state and then let's change the duration to 0.4 so a little bit longer so let's uh, preview it now so when you click it will rotate so it's working pretty good now um, and then I wanted to make it feel a little bit more playful by selecting these transition as spring and then when you uh, preview it there's a little bit of bouncy movements uh, going on here so it feels much more fun so uh, in order to complete this interaction all you need to do is to add another object to this event so i'm going to add here and then for the object i'm going to select the face and i want this face to change to state and also down here this duration could be 0 0.4 all right so let's preview it so we click here it will rotate and then it change to this uh, happy face uh, so it's working pretty well here so let's uh, go back and then apply the same process to the other button with this, this thumb down button uh, so let's add this new object to this event and then select rotations and then select state tools uh, duration 0 0.4 and then change the transition to spring 
and scroll down here and add the final object to this event so let's select face and select stage 2 and duration 0 0.4 as the same as the auto button all right so we should have everything set up here so let's just preview it so we click here happy face click here angry face so uh, so everything is working uh, perfectly here so the only thing left is that if you uh, drag around the scene you see that that's kind of orbiting the whole thing and we don't want this so uh, to fix it it's very easy just go to export and then down here you see there's a bunch of different settings so you need to just turn all of these things off uh, so we don't need any of these so we just need the screen to be fixed so uh, we got here so just click update and and just uh, preview it again to see uh, how it's gonna affect the scene and then you can see that everything is being in place uh, and being static you will not see it moving around uh, no matter what you do here all right so let's go back and then click on export and then we're going to export this into a public URL so all you have to do is copy this uh, URL link and then go to your browser and then just paste this to your browsers and see the magic happen Alright, so now you can see that it's working perfectly on browsers and then it's totally responsive so you can just scale the browser down or view it on your phone. Uh, just test this and it's working like magic here. So yeah, that is it. That's how you can create a very simple 3D mobile interaction to impress your clients, your friends. This is the end of my tutorial today so I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the next one.